This is the top 5 gainers and top 5 losers analysis for March 22, 2019. I'm going to use uh, Monday's data, March 25th data, so that I can make it up to you for what I owe you for the Friday video. So for the top 5 gainers, we will be discussing AGI, Holcim, Now Corporation, ECP, and ACR. For the top 5 losers, we have MWC, IMI, ABA, ZHI, and ATI. I have already checked on Edge if any of these 10 stocks have any dividend announcements, but none of them has, or none of them have. Uh, I just want to give you some quick reminders when it comes to dividends. If you're going to buy shares of a dividend issuing company before the ex dividend date and keep those shares at least until the ex dividend date, then those shares will receive dividends. However, if you're going to buy shares of any dividend issuing company either on or after the ex-dividend date, then those shares will no longer receive dividends. Now, if you're going to sell shares of a dividend issuing company before the ex-dividend date, then those shares will not receive dividends. On the other hand, if you're going to sell either on or after the ex-dividend date, then those shares will still receive dividends. Okay, so let's start it off with AGI. AGI closed today at 15.94. Let me show you the resistance. Resistance is at 17.20. Support is at 15.15. Today's red candlestick is supported with a small volume, relatively small volume, which is below, I think it's uh, more or less 50% below the 10-day volume average. So following how we interpret this to me this means that the red candlestick is not really that sustainable because of a relatively low volume in other words AGI holders are not that convinced yet to join the the, the selling rally or the uh, selling sentiment for today's trading meanwhile MACD is still bullish as it's still moving above the signal line RSI already bent downwards after reaching the 80% 80, uh, 80 level. Um, that's a good indicator uh, telling us that traders thought that AGI was already over, overbought at the 16.30 uh, level. So they sold down. Now, uh, AGI maintains a low risk level as it uh, still has a 27% historical volatility score for 2019 year to date agi has a net foreign buying uh, status now let's take a look at the volume review for agi remember it closed today at 15.94 and it registered uh, a net foreign selling worth half a million pesos worth of net foreign buying still insignificant Okay, for the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades, I see I see that between 15.88 all the way to 16 pesos per share. Again, 15.88 to 16 pesos per share. Just a comment, 15.94 is closer to the intraday low than to the intraday high. Okay, so that means you will have to park your, your, you'll have to monitor towards the uh, intraday low of today's trading. My overall sentiment on uh, AGI based on the daily, daily chart is to is uh, neutral to bearish. So neutral to bearish. Uh, I have some reservations to mark it as completely bearish because of today's not so high volume. And nonetheless, uh, we, we, you, I suggest that you have to monitor the price closer to the support level than to the resistance area. So if you are interested to trade AGI, my advice is that you, you wait for a pullback near 15.15. Okay. If you already have AGI, in any situation wherein you already have the stock, there's no better advice than to tell you to to know where your trailing stop loss is and uh, make sure that you 
respect your trailing stop loss you either you either sell at once or you sell in tranches once your trailing stop loss is hit okay that's it for AGI let's move on to Holcim Holcim closed today at 10.38 resistance is at 10.84 support is at 10.10 .10. today's red candlestick is supported with the towering volume which is obviously above the 10-day volume average of Holcim um, MACD remains above the signal line but if this red candlestick continues towards the uh, within this week it, there's a high probability for MACD to dive below the signal line especially that MACD is not that far yet is not so distant above the signal line meanwhile RSI is already uh, close to the oversold or overbought level perhaps that uh, traders got the clue from RSI uh, for today's red candlestick it motivated them to consider uh, consider uh, raking in some profits perhaps due to the nearness proximity of the RSI score to the overbought level and uh, Holcim still has a low risk level due to its historical volatility score of 35%. Holcim has a net foreign, a net foreign trade of I think it's rough, it's about it's a net foreign selling. It's that's its net foreign trade for 2019 year to date. Now if it breaks down below 10.10. .10, I suggest that you wait for the price to inch closer to 9.11 okay now let's take a look at the volume review but before that I'd like to make a comment that Holcim got 14 million pesos worth of net foreign selling today I repeat it closed at 10.38 and that price is closer to the intraday low than to the intraday high the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is pegged between the closing price itself 10.38 all the way to 10.50 my overall sentiment on Holcim is uh, bearish my suggestion is that you monitor the price near 10.10 .10. if there's still a strong volume strong selling volume once it hits 10.10 .10, then you have to adjust your waiting area near 9.11 which is the next support level so that's it for Holcim. Let me move on to Now Corporation. Now Corporation closed at 2.62. Resistance remains at 3.18. Support is at 2.50. The closing price is closer to the to the support level than to the resistance area. And uh, today's red candlestick is supported with the uh, volume that's I think it's about 50% of its 10 day volume average there's a possibility for now to just move sideways because of its uh, rel relatively low volume but I but, but my bias is still towards the support area which is 2.5 now for the 2019 year to date's net foreign trade I think now corporation is on, on a net foreign selling status MACD is still moving below the signal line that's a bearish signal uh, RSI is still uh, it's closer to the oversold territory than to the overbought area so I think the rebounding area here is close to 2.5 when that happens I, I, I think RSI must have already will have already hit the over uh, oversold territory now corporation has a moderate risk level with its volatility score of 56 or 57 percent let's take a look at its uh, the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades but before that net uh, the net foreign for now today is uh, 159,000 pesos worth of net foreign selling the closing price of 2.62 is closer to the intraday low than to the intraday high of now corporation the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is pegged between 2.6 all the way to 2.65 my overall sentiment on now is bearish 
My suggestion is that you wait for a pullback near 2.50. But as usual, if the volume uh, continues to move higher than normal in support of the bearish movement of Now Corporation, then I suggest that you move your waiting area near or below uh, 2.5 which is at 1.98 or 2.2 pesos per share. That's it for Now Corporation. Now let's move on to ECP. Easy Call Communication Philippines or ECP for short closed today at 13 pesos and 40 centavos. Resistance, the strong resistance is at 19.06. Support is at 11.73. 11.73. Midterm resistance is at 14.25. Today's red candlestick is supported by, it came with uh, a red volume which is above the 10-day the volume average of ECP. For me, that means the red, the, the, the downtrend uh, might just uh, may, might just continue within this week so it might retest the support near 11.73 the uh, 2019 year to date net foreign trade is i think it's at n it's a net foreign selling it's a net foreign selling for 2019 year to date macd remains bearish i don't see there's no guarantee, there's no clear evidence of, well, let me put it this way. If this downtrend will continue, then this uh, uh, bullish convergence that is uh, being formed on the MACD, between MACD and signal line might, might get dissolved. It might, it might, uh, it might be broken. The, 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 the forming bullish convergence might be deformed if this downtrend uh, or, or, or if this selling sentiment on ECP continues to retest the support at 11.73. And when that happens, I think that's the, the, the area that RSI will be hitting the oversold territory. Maybe when that happens, traders might think that ECP is already too cheap uh, near 11.73. Meanwhile, ECP has a high risk level with its volatility score of 94%. ECP has a net foreign worth uh, 139,000 pesos worth of net foreign buying today. Its closing pr price of 13.40 is closer to the intraday low than to the intraday high. Now the range that got the biggest volume and the, the highest number of trades, it's actually quite challenging to identify that range because uh, the volume and uh, the number of trades are they seem to be um, evenly distributed all throughout the uh, transacted price points of ECP today. But to nominate a few, I see roughly 10% of today's volume was registered at 14.50. 10% of today's volume and that price point got 64 trades. And I think that's the biggest trade ever transacted to a single price point on ECP today and uh, it's I think it's, it's seconded by 13.40 which is the closing price that price level got 3% of today's volume with 20 trades but given this uh, given this overall given my overall bearish sentiment on ECP I would rec advise that you wait for a pullback near 11.73 or 11.7 to round it down so that's it for ECP. Now let's move on to ACR. Alson's Consolidated Resources. ACR closed today at 1.51. Okay. And the resistance is at 1.58. Support is at 1.41. Today's ascent in price came with uh, a volume that's above its 10-day volume average. Not, not as impressive or not as big as its volume last Friday but I think uh, that would be enough to, to sustain if not to maintain its green uh, its ascent uh, its uh, direction pointing to the northward direction okay so the net foreign trade the net foreign trade for 2019 year to date is it plays at it's obviously net foreign selling MACD 
still is still enjoying its position above the signal line and the ACR has a volatility score of 40% and that gives it a low risk level now for the today's net foreign I think it's zero zero net zero foreign transactions on ACR today its closing price of 1.51 it's is it's actually between it's close to it's to the median between the intraday high and intraday low okay so the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is between 1.5 and 1.51 my overall sentiment on ACR remains bullish but this is not one of the stocks that I would be interested to trade due to liquidity issues okay there's 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 a volatility or liquidity issue on ACR and seeing this a volat liquidity issue does not give me the conviction or does not give me the appetite to add ACR in my watch list for short-term trading if you are interested to trade the name make sure that you wait for a pullback near 1.41 or if it breaks out at 1.58 you can do a test buy if and only if that breakout came with a significant volume that means to say there's a chance for ACR traders uh, uh, to trade the, the ACR at a price higher than the resistance at 1.58 but only when that happens so we'll see okay so that's it for the top five gainers for March 22. Let's move on to the top five losers, beginning with MWC. The bear sentiment on MWC uh, on uh, Manila Water Company, it's still evident on the price movement of, of MWC, the disappointment uh, of people with the uh, water-related issue in Metro Manila. So MWC closed today at 24.60. It continues its downtrend movement below the previous support at 25 which is now acting as the immediate resistance immediate support is that now at 23.44 today's red candlestick came with a volume that's below 50 percent of its 10-day volume average macd maintains its bearish movement below the signal line there it's it's clear that there is no formation of any bullish convergence with a signal line and it is uh, given this MWC has a low risk level with its volatility score of 33 percent the year-to-date net foreign trade it's I think it's at uh, net foreign selling for MWC for year-to-date 2019 for today, the net foreign, it, it's a net foreign selling worth 3 million pesos. I repeat, MWC closed at 24.60 and that is closer. That's the median between today's intraday high and intraday low. The range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is registered between 24.5 to 24.65. My overall sentiment on MWC is bearish. My recommendation is that you wait for a pullback or for a potential rebound or a sign of reversal, whatever you want to call it, near 23.4 all the way to 23.5. Okay, so that's it for MWC. Now let's take a look at IMI. Integrated Microelectronics Incorporated or IMI closed today at 12.80. Support is at 11.69. Resistance is at 13.66. Today's red candlestick came with the volume that's above its 10-day volume average. Given that combination, I would say that the downtrend is more likely to continue. The 2019 year-to-date net foreign sentiment is bullish on IMI, but the net foreign buying uh, days uh, got minimized this month of March. MACD maintains its position above the signal line, but I think there's a bearish, a bearish convergence being formed between the MACD between the MACD line and the signal line. IMI has a low risk level with its volatility score of 47%. Let's take a look at today's net foreign trade. IMI got a net foreign buying worth 4 million pesos today. 
it closed at 12.80 and that closing price is closer to the intraday low than to the intraday high. Meanwhile, the range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is pegged between 12.80 all the way to 12.90. 12.80 to 12.90. My overall sentiment on IMI is bearish. Wait for a pullback. Let me plot this uh, midterm support. Wait for a pullback near 12.6. If and only if volume is still high when the price hits 12.60, I would then suggest that you continue to wait near 11.70 or 11.69. But if volume uh, relaxes a bit once the price hits 12.5 or 12.6, then there's a possibility for a rebound to happen on that level okay but if volume is still high once the price drops to 12.6 then therefore it's, it could be an indication that uh, the appetite of traders to sell is not yet exhausted okay my overall sentiment is bearish and i've given you my recommended trade setup already now let's move on to aba ABBA. ABACOR Capital Holdings or ABA closed today at 0 0.62, very close to the support at 0 0.61, resistance is at 0 0.86 or we can actually put that midterm resistance near 0 0.75. Okay, 0 0.86 is an ambitious resistance so I've drawn a line a midterm resistance at 0 0.75. Today's red candlestick came with, uh, of course, it's a red volume, but it's also a, a little bit above its 10 day volume average. This means, to me, this means that the descent in price might continue. MACD remains bearish, no signs of any uh, bullish convergence being formed. ABA still has a low risk level with its volatility score of 47%. Let's take a look at the net foreign trade today. ABA registered at 277,000 pesos worth of net foreign selling. Closing price is 0 0.62, which is the median or average between the intraday high and the intraday low. The range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is between 0 0.60 and 0 0.62. My overall sentiment on ABA is bearish. My recommendation is wait wait for the price to hit 0 0.60, and when that happens, when that hap if that happens with still with a strong volume, then I suggest that you adjust your waiting area near 0 0.4 or maybe right here 0 0.5. So always reevaluate every time the price hits a resistance or a support level. That's it for ABA. Now let's move on to ZHI. Zeus Holdings or ZHI closed today at 0 0.405. Support is at 0 0.310. Resistance is at 0 0.408. So today's closing price is, is a closer, obviously, and it's about to break out above the resistance at 0 0.407 or 0 0.408. Today's green candlestick came with a strong bullish bullish volume which is above the 10-day volume average. MACD is still moving above the signal line. Okay. Now, historical volatility is at 92% and that gives ZHI a high risk level. Okay, now let's take a look at today's net foreign trade. ZHI got 500,000 pesos worth of net foreign buying. Significant. The closing price of 0 0.405 is near the middle of today's uh, transacted uh, price points. The range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is between 0 0.4 and 0 0.41. My overall sentiment on ZHI is bullish, but there's a possibility for uh, for profit taking to be the dominant sentiment 
now that it's it has kissed the immediate resistance level so if you have a position on ZHI make sure you can do two things it's either you sell at or near the resistance or you strictly follow your trailing stop loss but my advice is that you consider locking in some profits near the resistance area if you don't have ZHI yet wait for a pullback or if the breakout continues you can do a test buy if and only if the breakout came with a strong bullish volume that means above the 10 day volume average okay so that's it for ZHI now last stock in the list we have ATI Asian Terminals Incorporated or ATI closed today at 15.78 I think it's uh, one fluctuation higher than Friday closing. Today's volume is ver barely visible on the volume histogram. And it's uh, MACD is bearish as well. And it has a moderate risk level with a volatility score of 56%. Support is at 14 pesos per share. Resistance is at 16.82. So in the, the today's net foreign trade is insignificant. I don't know if this is an error, but it's only four pesos. I think it's an error. Um, today's uh, range that got the biggest volume and the highest number of trades is between 15.76 and 15.80. Did you know that today uh, ATI only registered three, four, five, six, seven trades? So there's really a liquidity issue in ATI definitely not the kind of stock of a stock that I would want to trade because of an obvious liquidity issue so let's scrap this off from our from your watch list when it comes to short-term trading okay so there you go for the top uh, for the uh, top five gainers and top five losers analysis for March 22 2019 again my name is JZ de Guzman I do hope um, that has helped you uh, make a data-driven decisions for your short-term trading setups. Thank you and have a great day.